with my background in sports coaching, basketball, why don't I create my own event and raise as much money as possible and honor my mom. The main event is that pro dunk show. My uh, jaw drops every year. I see these guys, they always do something new and, and crazy. <laughs> you have a little baby. How's that going yeah. <laughs> for you? Your face changed. You are like, oh, so in love, like melting. <laughs> girl dad, I'm a girl dad. The MS Positive Podcast is a platform where people living with multiple sclerosis come to share everything else they do with their lives aside from being an MS patient. Among our guests are artists, singers, bloggers, actors, authors, DJs, and much more. And yeah, also health professionals because we have to stay in the know. We're more than MS. I came across your wonderful project, Dunk MS, which is a great fundraiser that you do on the West Coast. So I'm interested in the background study of your project. Um, the year was founded. What do you have to do to put it together? Because it's a big, it's a big deal. It's, it's big. And how do you shape the whole concept? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's a pretty unique event. So I, I thought of the, I can more about the, talk about the origin later, but the, the, the event in general uh, came to me in 2017. I thought with my background in sports coaching, basketball, and entrepreneurship, why don't I create my own event and raise as much money as possible in honor of my mom? I chose to take a year to research how to start a charity event, you know, the things to do for it, uh, build my network, uh, especially in the MS community as well. Um, you know, talk to a lot of people in the MS Society, UCLA Health, Cedar Sinai, and other people in the nonprofit space to figure out what to do and how to create this event. Um, and all this is in my spare time as well. So I still, you know, work full time. Uh, to this day and do all this um, on the side. And so the, uh, the, the event on a high level is a kids basketball clinic for about an hour and a half. But during that time, it, um, there's raffle prizes, silent auction, uh, photo booth, uh, free food, sponsor tables. Um, and then I also have a, a MS expert speak to the crowd as well. Um, so after all that happens, the main event is that pro dunk show. So I get the world's top pro dunkers to come out and put an amazing show for the crowd. Um, yeah, I mean, I, my uh, jaw drops every year. I see these guys, they always do something new and, and crazy. <laughs> and after that, we take a, a big group photo and then we try to raise as much money as possible and, and proceeds to support MS research at UCLA Health, led by Dr. Vosco, who's a world-renowned MS researcher. That's amazing. That's amazing. So you have a bas basketball uh, career background because you are a champion. Like you have won so many awards while you were in school and then you played UCLA. Um, and in 2008, you let your team as senior captain. You're a pro. I mean, you're really good at this. You know what you're doing. You know your craft. Yeah, I was. I mean, of course, it was, it's a team. It's a team sport. So I, a great, a great team. Obviously, wasn't just me. But uh, yeah, I went to a very good high school called Modern Day in, in Orange County, California. And just basketball has been a huge part of my life since I was a little kid. And uh, yeah, been lucky enough to to win multiple championships in high school and and play at UCLA too. So uh, yes, it's been fun. <laughs> what is your connection to? MS or multiple sclerosis. Why are you so interested and so into bringing this awareness and creating this massive event um, and fundraising, uh, which has been very successful? You have been uh, fundraising more and more money each year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it really started with my mom. So um, when I was a junior in high school, uh, this is back in 2007, my mom was diagnosed with MS um, out, out of the blue. Yeah, right. So we didn't know what MS was. We once you got diagnosed, we, we were all trying to, you know, kind of scramble and figure out, you know, what this is, what are the effects, right? Everything that, you know, normally kind of a family would do. And she worked in the healthcare industry. So she was a pharmaceutical sales rep for Merck and Amgen, as well as a nurse. So, you know, she was kind of in that world as well. So again, still, still a shock. So yeah, it, it was, it was pretty tough. Uh, we're pretty sure we, we don't know, but pretty sure she had progressive, but yeah, she declined pretty, pretty quickly in uh, the, the two years following uh, where she uh, and at the end of it, you know, in and out of the hospital multiple times in those two years, and then uh, into a kind of more of a walker, uh, not all the time, but a lot of the time and, and bed rest for a bit. And back then, I remember, you know, in, in high school and college, um, she had took about 10 to 15 MS pills, you know, a day and, um, and had a pain, and eventually had a pain patch as well. So it was pretty, yeah, pretty um, tough as a teenager to see your mom go through that. And then I have a younger sister who's two and a half years younger than me. Um, and so that was obviously tough. And unfortunately, she, she passed away only two years later, suddenly in, uh, in July 30th, 2009, the summer before my sophomore year at UCLA. 
And so obviously that was a hard time for, for me and my family. My, my goal after, after obviously grieving and, and taking the time and was to create an event in her honor, right? My life mission is to help find a cure in her honor and also help those currently affected. And so that's kind of the origin story of how Dunk MS came to be. I'm sorry for the loss of your mom. When we met, I told you that I relate to that because I had this more or less the same age as you when I lost mine. So I know those are very difficult years in your life because you are like transitioning from a young man to become a man and you're transitioning from high school to, to college. I was going through the same thing. I didn't lose my, mo my mom to multiple sclerosis, but I definitely feel a lot of empathy for you because it was uh, it's definitely an experience that marked you forever and it really changes the narrative of, of your life. Whether you look at it from a positive point of view or perspective, it still get, it gets rooted in you and it changes you. But in your case, I really am proud of you. Like you said, in a, in a, in a way to grieve your, the loss of your mother, you honor her with this amazing event. And it started when? Uh, is it 2018? Am I correct? Correct. 2018 was our first year. Yeah. And just again, it's just a, it's kind of like a side project, right? Our first year, we raised $45,000 and, and, and 200 people showed up. So I knew we had something special. Uh, and so we've, we've been growing every year. And um, last year we had 500 people and we hosted it at UCLA's Wooden Center. And so, yeah, this year I'm hoping for 750 people and uh, it'll be at UCLA's Poly Pavilion, which is the, the, the biggest, their large legendary gym. Wow. And with UCLA Athletics as well. And so it's just really, it's been crazy to see the growth from 2018 here to 2024. And mind you, you know, during COVID, we didn't have an event in 2020. We did a virtual dunk show. So I had the dunkers record their dunks and I did a live stream for everyone to watch on YouTube and we raised 24 grand. So, you know, better than nothing. 24 grand is, is still impressive. I mean, during those harsh times, you know, yeah. it was impressive. And then we didn't do an event in 2021 because at that time, the vaccines weren't fully out yet and people weren't comfortable going back to events. And so essentially we had two years off of in-person events. And so it's been amazing to see that growth coming back to in-person events. So I'm just uh, blessed and honored to get so much help from, from my close friends, my family, and, and other volunteers. So it's definitely a, a team and community effort. That's amazing. But you're also targeting uh, the sports, you know, and basketball is so huge. And, uh, you know, people probably were like just willing to get out and have some fun. And, you know, why not play basketball and, and uh, fundraise some money? So the whole concept is, was well put together. How did you connect with this uh, pro donkers? Were they your friends forever? Or <laughs> did you have to like, you know, knock on doors and get them? Because they do like pretty professional shows. Like, Yes. Yeah, it, it's actually a mix. So uh, the basketball community is, is pretty small, especially in Southern California. Um, I actually went to UCLA with one of the pro donkers, John Clark. He was a high jumper and a long jumper on the track team. And we were, we were friends in college. And so as I was doing my research, I was like, hey, my buddy John's a pro dunker now. Look at that. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. So then he connected me to other pro dunkers that he was friends with in the LA area. And that's how I got my first group of guys to, to come to Duncan Ness. And then it just you know, grew from there. But a lot of the guys have been there since day one, or at least our second year. So they, they love our cause and love our mission. Uh, it's a very unique event. And so they, they're amazing. They, they love to be a part of it. How did the, uh, the dynamic in your house change when your mom was diagnosed and declined so, so quickly? A really good question. Um, when she got first diagnosed, um, you know, me and my sister, and me and me more as an older child had to, had to step up and you know, we had to grow up a little faster, right? Um, my parents divorced when I was three, but our dad is still in our lives and lives close by. We have an amazing step, stepdad that's been in our lives for most of our lives as well. And so um, you know, it was great to have them obviously <laughs> leading the charge. But as a kid, yeah, you kind of pick up the slack around the house. And for me, again, people, everyone's different, obviously. For me, I kind of com compartmentalized the hard part of her diagnosis and didn't take that, uh, at least I thought, you know, to school and to basketball and the things I did. Uh, and I focused on the best I could be. And she was amazing and encouraged me to be the best I could be in whatever I'm doing. And, and we, we were best friends. It was very tragic and sad. And through, through faith, through family and friends, that helped us grieve and get through the tragic loss. And, you know, it takes time. And I, I always tell everyone, like, the things I'm doing now, I'm open talking about this here 15 years later. This, I definitely wasn't able to do this even a couple of years after her passing, right? So, uh, and I always tell people that are listening or friends of mine, like, it, all this stuff takes time. There's light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to keep, keep moving forward step by step. And so that, that's what she taught us to do as kids. And she had a tough childhood and she overcame so much in her childhood, being adopted at birth 
uh, to a, a low-income family in El Paso, Texas, earning a full scholarship to the University of Texas for nursing, and you know, you know, making good money and doing being successful in in a career as a black woman in the '90s is unheard of. And so, just learning more about her after she passed too is was so inspiring. And I I can't sit around and not do something that's just not you know not in our DNA and just not me as a person. So, like I said, yeah. I have nothing to lose, right? Like whatever we raise, I'm I'm happy with them. Of course, I'm trying to raise more every year, but it's all going to MS Research. You know, we're all fighting the same fight and have the same goal. That's so sweet. I see it from both sides. I have kids myself and I've seen how my kids have to take roles that maybe they shouldn't just because they have to to help me. And also I've had guests here that have a group for people that were in your place at some point. They are ca uh, caregivers, but they are still teens. And so they're navigating the change in the dynamic of the house. And it's so interesting to hear their stories. Uh, now they are actually in it, in the midst of it. They're living that part of what you live with your mom. Now you're on the other side, you've been successful and uh, you turn it around and now you are using the unfortunate and sad passing of your mother and you turn it into something that can help others. So it's inter interesting to hear what you said. Uh, and, and I remember that story when they, I actually joined that group because uh, my kids are part of it. It's very interesting to hear their stories. Now they are, you know, they're still young, they're not mature and they're going through it and then see how successful the outcome can be just looking at you is, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, thank so you. it's, it's for, me, for me, it means a lot because uh, I see how my kids struggle. You know, they're still teenagers and, and they struggle, but they try really hard and I think they're getting better and better over time. And it has taught them to be independent, ready to survive. Now you are a father. You want to share that with us? You have a little baby. How's that going yeah. for you? <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been a fun up and down ride. Yeah, she was uh, born <laughs> January 7th. And so she's about uh, about four months old now. And yeah, she's just oh my God. a bundle of joy. And, and you, know, you, know, you know, as a mom, it's just a lot of ups and downs, uh, lack of sleep and learning on the fly, and learning from family and friends too that have done it before you. But yeah, it's just, she's been, it's just a dream. And we're so lucky to have a healthy baby girl. Yeah. Your face changed. You are like, oh, I'm so in love, like melting. <laughs> girl dad. I'm a girl I can dad. see it. Cause, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Girls, uh, you know, dads, little girls. Hey, enjoy the, enjoy the ride because they love their daddies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I saw her picture. She's beautiful. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Also, you have collaborated with the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. For several years, you were a participant in the Walk MS ever since, right? Uh, your mom, after her passing. And now you are part of the Emerging Leaders Board in Southern California since 2018. So coincidentally, when you started your fundraiser event. And also uh, Orange County Community Council since last year, 2023. Have you found your purpose is basically what I want to know. Have you found your purpose after this uh, life-changing experience? I have. Yeah, I, I, I truly, I truly think I have. I know, sorry, I know I have with the success of Duncan Mass and just with the community around, you know, within the MS community and kind of how I can help the MS community, um, you know, today and then long term, you know, helping give funds for research. Um, yes, yeah, so I joined the, the uh, MS Society Emerging Leaders Board. Um, they obviously heard about Duncan Mass because I've been talking to them and then uh, some other team in, invited me to, to this group right kind of after i launched the event after the event happened and so yeah it's been amazing for like personally for my network um just to connect with like-minded individuals not everyone on the board has ms but most of them are affected but other ones like myself or kind of a family member uh, has ms so it's a great group you know in multiple ways uh, our group throws a summer soiree every august in la as well so we raise money for the ms society obviously to help fund a cure too and Similar with the OC Community Council that I joined this past year, since I moved down to Orange County um, recently. Um, so yeah, I'm a part of a part of that that crew as well, trying to raise awareness down here in SoCal. And so yeah, it's it's been fun to to make new friends, to reconnect. Again, it's like taking that negative and turning to a positive. I would not have all the things that we're, we're doing now with Duncan Mass and these friendships, you know, without my mom passing, right? I wouldn't. This none of this would be going on, at least in my you know, in my life. And so I feel in a weird way. I wouldn't say lucky, but fortunate from the circumstances of my life, if that makes sense. You know, because a lot of people, and easily you could go down into a hole after anyone in your family passes, right? Families can, can grow closer or 
or go further apart. And luckily, we've become closer as a family and kind of embraced the unfortunate change and tragedy in our lives to make to turn to a positive, right? So that's been, again, in a weird way, uh, I, I feel blessed in a weird way. It doesn't sound we- <laughs> it it doesn't sound weird weird to me at all <laughs> because uh, because of multiple sclerosis. Yeah. I mean, again, like you, like you just said, I don't feel lucky. I don't know if that would be like the right word. I don't know. Maybe it is, but I feel blessed as well, uh, in a way, uh, because I have to live with multiple sclerosis. So I go through the ups, the ups and downs of living with it, which are not fun. And the static of multiple sclerosis is always in the background, interfering with everything that I have to do. But I have found a community. It feels so good for me to also be able to create a sense of community with the things um, I, I've had the opportunity to do in my collaborations with National Multiple Sclerosis Society and other organizations. Uh, my private projects like this podcast, which, you know, the, the, the goal is to create... A, awareness and also create a, a, like a, a forum or a, a space for people that have some sort of connection with the disease to see it from the brighter side and uh, express themselves and share their experiences with, with it. I understand it's not weird at all. I mean, it has opened so many doors uh, for me that I never thought possible, to be honest with you. Things that I always wanted to do. I was not able to do before because I was too busy with other things in life. And then MS came in and stopped me on my tracks and said, you have to stop. It literally, it literally did because I was completely paralyzed and I laugh now, but it was not fun at the moment. So it was literally like a stop and be with yourself, reorganize your life. And it, it was worth it. Beautiful things came out of, of that experience. And I made great friends, great people I've met along the way. and so. It has not been all bad. Yeah, yeah. I can I can still smile every day. Yeah, you have a great perspective, and and I say this a lot. The MS community, you all inspire me to be better and to to just keep fighting because you know you 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 deal with this every day. Obviously, I I don't have, I don't have to. I just I viewed it from you know a child perspective, but I'm trying to do the best I can while healthy to do the best I can to help the MS community. So, and you you including obviously inspire me. To be better and to, to be the best I can. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for well, honestly your, your courage, your bravery, all that. You know, it's 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 inspiring, truly. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, I know that this year you're gonna have a special space or a special tent for people that are known in the online or virtual social media MS world. That is, tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, at Duncan S. Exactly. So I actually left that out earlier in what we're doing at Duncan S. So a new thing, uh, I was just about to talk about it too. You're, you're, you're on it here. I love it. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> a new thing we're adding this year at Duncan MS is the MS community zone. And so I learned the last couple of years is at Duncan MS, at least in LA or Southern California, it's kind of a networking event for the MS community. Um, and so I, I thought, hey, let me, let me create a, a private and relaxed space for the MS community to, to learn from each other, to connect and to feel a sense of community. And so we're launching this at Dunk MS in partnership um, with Heart of Hope, a, a kind of a brand that I'm starting, as well as the MS Society. And so this is going to be about an hour and a half of a, a private space with, within the larger gym of, of Dunk MS. And we're going to have Dr. Patel, the MS doctor at UCLA Health, speak to everyone who's in attendance at the MS Community Zone, do a Q&A. And then we're going to do a small group sessions as well uh, for anyone affected by MS, including family members, caregivers. We want to open it up to the entire MS community. And so that'll be a private and relaxed and quiet space to do all that and, and to really connect with one another. And we'll also have raffle prizes too. So I'm a big fan of raffle prizes. You get a free raffle ticket. Uh, so I'd love to give away free things. I that's think that's nice. a fun thing to do always. And so, yeah, there's no extra ticket need to be bought. You just buy a normal GA ticket to Duncan S and there is a special section there. So uh, for any listeners here, we actually have a special promo code for the MS community. Oh. Yes. So literally you go to website, duncanms.com get tickets, and then just type in MS, and you get a $5 GA ticket. So 75% off. Oh, look at that. That's great. That's awesome. Oh, man, I wish I was on that side so I could participate. Sounds like pr- pretty cool. I saw um, previous events, at, uh, the videos of the previous events, and they're a blast. I mean, you guys really have fun for a good cause. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really, really unique event, and I always emphasize this, this is an event just for basketball fans. That's just a piece of it. It's really a, f- a fun family event for MS community for anyone who loves to get involved with charity or the community, as well as basketball. So it's a really a general 
event for anyone who wants to come and support you know, premise research. Oh, and then last thing for the MS Community Zone, it's actually going to be hosted by my my friend, uh, Brittany, aka a hot MS. Brittany, yeah, she's yeah. a uh, MS <laughs> no, advocate and influencer uh, down in, in Southern California. Yeah, she's helping out too, which is great. That's amazing. Yeah, we all know Brittany. Yeah. She's all over yes. the place. <laughs> <laughs> she's amazing. That's great. Um, so what's the location, time, date of the event? It is Saturday, May 18th at UCLA. Uh, doors will, check-in will start at 11 a.m. And so, yeah, come come on by. Everything is at dunkms.com. Please utilize the promo code MS for $5 GA tickets. You have social media. You are on Instagram. Oh, yes, yes. you do. What is your handle? At dunkms. Yep. This is amazing. I mean, I'm so proud of you. Really appreciate what you're doing for the community. I mean, this means a lot when you, um, you know, decided to take this experience and turn it into something that uh, can help others because uh, it's not only, you know, a positive perspective, but you're actually fundraising major funds for research, which is so highly needed. And you're also collaborating with the National MS Society, which we know are working really hard to find the cure. And they are like the biggest organization financing all the research that is happening, which uh, we have come a long way. Uh, right now we have, if I'm not mistaken, we are on the 23rd DMT, which is unheard of because when MS came to light or they gave it a name, there, there were only there was only one or two medications for almost a decade. People didn't really have an option to treat MS, at least to halt the disease. You know, because MS is progressive, it's chronic, it will continue doing, you know, causing damage. But still, now with medications, uh, we can stop the progression in a way uh, so we can avoid further disability because we know it's very disabling. It really messes with everything in your body, your, your speech, your, your vision, your mobility. So it's very aggressive. And the fact that we have that, it's because of all the research that has been done. And so now we're aiming for cure. And that is what research is concentrating in right now at this moment. Uh, investigation and all the clinical trials are aiming to uh, for a cure and repair damage, which was something that we never thought possible. Other people didn't have that option, but it's very expensive. So this uh, huge event that you have is helping to continue research and hopefully we will have a cure. Yeah. So. We'll get there. So We'll get there. So it makes me uh, very proud. Somebody so young like you, that you are so invested in the cause. Hey, you're on my team. <laughs> so thank you very much for everything that you're doing. And hopefully I'm going to plan to go next okay. year. I mean, this year was like a short yeah, notice. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> <For me. laughs> next year for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would love to participate and bring my boys to, yeah. you know, shoot that'd, some hoops and have that'd fun. That'd be great. We'd love that. All right. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your presence here today and sharing your story and for everything that you're doing. And I hope that we stay connected. Yes, yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. appreciate everything you do as well for the MS community. So uh, kudos to you and, and your team and everything that you do. <laughs> this is fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And I will see you next time. Have a nice day.